Uh, so the function block factory, what is it? Mm -mm. The function block factory is a uh, software-based digital service, a SAS, software as a service. Uh, it creates function block libraries. Uh, we support today 10 different PLC systems, and of course we are going to enhance it in the future, so we will support even more than, than, than this. And uh, the created libraries, they save you time uh, when uh, using IO link devices and using their data in your PLC systems. Uh, it prevents you from, from committing error as you just get a working code and you just can rely on uh, the fact that it works and uh, you don't need to care about any problems. It also speeds up the commissioning as you've got uh, a speaking code. We will see each why afterwards. Um, yeah, I already mentioned it's uh, available for 10 PLCs now and uh, yeah, we will get some more in, in the next future. Uh, I call it libraries because these libraries, they include functions and function blocks and all those uh, data structures where all the parameters are in. So you don't need to declare a, a lot of variables. It speeds you up again. Um, it just makes the, the libraries to just make handling of IOLing devices very easy. They help you to, to handle process data in, a, in an easy way, and they help you to access reading and writing uh, to service data of the IOLing devices. And it completely eliminates any searching in manuals or uh, in IODDs and so on. So how does it look like? You just uh, go to HTTPS, you see it here above, uh, FPF, Dot cloud <laughs> doesn't go away. Uh, FPF.cloud.sig.com, uh, and you'll land on the starting page of the function block factory, which is not shown in here, and we will see it uh, straight away. And when you start, when when you want to start to generate, uh, you will be requested for a SIG ID. So what you need to be able to, to use the function block factory is uh, a SIG ID. Once you have registered, you've got the right to generate. And you will get the first page, which is kind of a filter where you can find the IODDs for those devices which you would like to generate for. Uh, you can type in some, some information just to uh, Diminish the the uh, list of available IODDs. So you can you can type in the vendor of the device you would like to generate for. If you know uh, some name details or the whole name, you can type it in. Uh, if you know this is a uh, device following the 1.1 specification or following the one the 1 1.0 specification, you can type it in as well. And if you know the device ID, you just can type the device ID. It doesn't really matter what you type in here, or you don't need to type anything at at all, or you can type everything. Uh, it's just a filter function to uh, just optimize the list uh, which we are present to you, uh, which include all the available I IODDs uh, which met met meet your search. Uh, on the next page, then you can select which PLC system and field bus combination you would like to generate for. Uh, once you selected a PLC system, you will get the information uh, which field buses are available and for which IOLink masters uh, those function blocks can be generated for. And uh, after that, you will be asked to give a name for the function block library. Uh, you can give any name you would like to. If you've got any name conventions, you can, of course, type uh, something that that matches or that fits your name convention. And then the names for the function block and for the structures and also for the process data parser function will be proposed, but you can, of course, change them. And depending on the PLC system you are generating for, 
there are some rules for naming and we just we are just following the rules so you 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 cannot type something wrong that that uh, it's not afterwards it can't be uh used in your PC system because the compiler does not accept it or something like that. This cannot happen. And uh, what, we, what we also generate is a documentation for your function blocks and uh, functions. And you can choose whether you would like to have it in German or in English. This is on this page. And uh, next page gives you a list of uh, all the parameters of uh, the device you want to generate for, and you can choose which parameters you would like to have in your function block and how you want to name them, right? So you can also follow your naming conventions if you have any. And clicking on next, you go to the last page, and on the last page, you've got the possibility to select which functionality, which features you would like to have in, in your function blocks. Uh, These features relate to the function block, which is for the uh, reading of service data, and it's not related to the uh, process data parser function. So, which features there are? We've got the, the multi selection. So this means that you can, uh, at the same time, read or write uh, more than just one parameter. Normally, communicating with IO link devices. Uh, you need to request just one single parameter, one after the other. Uh, the function blocks allow you to handle it a little bit easier. Then you've got the possibility to opt for sub-index support. This speeds up a little bit your communication in case you uh, just you are just interested in uh, just parts of some parameters. Especially in IOLing, we, we know a lot of st structs which are called records in IOLing. And a record has a lot of sub items. And, and it's not, it's, it's very often that you just need one or two of the sub items and not everything. Sorry. Uh, so you can opt for sub index support and then you have. Uh, the access to just the sub indices and you don't need to read the whole index. Then you can also choose the enumerators. We will see afterwards uh, what what it means. So you, you will get speaking names for uh, parameter values. And when you read your code, you or when, when you've got an answer, uh, you immediately know what it means and you do not need to look up for a value. What does a value 192 mean? And a commodity feature uh, which is called delete selection automatically is you can imagine you can now select multiple parameters and you read them and then you would like just to write a system command to the device so before you do this you need to deselect all the parameters uh, you you have selected and with this feature you can just uh, very easy do it with just one uh, or one single uh, selection of this parameter, otherwise you will need to program the selection and the deselection. Uh, we will see this afterwards as well, what this means. And well, that's all. Uh, and this is also uh, almost the whole presentation. <clears throat> There's one more thing I would like to, to make you being aware of. When you go to the function block factory, uh, you will get at the home and you can click here, function block configuration. You've got also a further option, which is called my, my libraries. And under this option, once you have purchased the function blocks, you will find all your purchased function blocks and uh, you can download the, them from here. So the function block factory organizes the function blocks for you as well. Okay, so for the presentation, and I'm now just going straight to uh, the function block factory. So you see the function block factory is accessible on the fpf.cloud.sig.com and you will land on the starting page. Here you've, you find a small explanation about what it is, uh, what is a function block, what is the process data, uh, parser function, and which PLCs we support. 
and some additional explanation uh, to all of the supported systems, right? And uh, well, to start generating, you can click at the function block configuration itself, or here on configure function blocks. I'm just going to uh, lock out myself, so you will see how it how it works when you go first in. Uh, when you click in here, you will be requested for your SIG ID. If you have a SIG ID, you can just uh, log in. If not, you need to register. I have already one, so I can just go in, and I will find myself in front of the very first, first page of the function block factory, where I've got a filter for the IODDs. Uh, if you have some, some doubts, you can, you can hover over the eye, and you will get an information what to do in here. And uh, well, I would like to generate a function block for the SIG device, which is called WL9GC, whatever. And I know it's following the one one specifications. So this is my, my filter entries. I can also throw this away. It doesn't really matter. But just to make the list a little bit shorter, I type this in. I click at Find IOLing Devices, and I will find all the Variants of the uh, W9, and I'm just choosing this uh, this one here, the 71 uh, GC71. Let me just W GC. So the list must become a little bit shorter. Or CG. Oh, how is it called? Nine G C seventy one. This is this one. Yeah. Okay. Now we selected it. So you you see, uh, this is the device. You see the picture of the device. Uh, you know now the the device ID. This is everything written out of the IODD, and you can can click next here. Now uh, we select the PLC we would like to generate for. Uh, let us generate for whatever. Um, yeah, let us take Twinket 3. So we support here two different field buses, Profibus and Ethercat. Normally, I would assume that when somebody is using Twinket 3, he's, he's having Ethercat. And there you see the list of supported masters. If you've got one of those masters, uh, this function block will work with you. We go to the next page, and now we are asked for entering a name for the library. I'm just going to enter the W99GC. Uh, and you see that the library name is proposed. Uh, the function block here is selected. The name is proposed for it. The name for the structure. We will see how the structure works. So this is where you, where, where you find your uh, parameters which you can select, and then also to, to the, the data to read and write, and also the process data parser function is selected. It might happen that uh, you 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 are generating for a device, and this parser data process data is disabled, and you cannot select it. This can happen when the device you want to create a library for does not have combined process data. Because then it doesn't make sense that you that you have a process data parser function, which is because there's nothing to parse. You've got just one single information in the process data, so you don't need to pay for that. And uh, in this case, this device has combined process data, so it makes sense to have a uh, process data parser function, and also a struct where you where you can then find all the single information of your process data already spread out and here you we can, you can choose which language you would like to have uh, the documentation in and well we just leave it with English and now you see some 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 further information and the price so far no Yeah, and here you see the. Hmm, I clicked F. Uh, 
I clicked F5 <laughs> because uh, it put things already here. You can just continue. Okay, here you see the list of parameters, and well, you can just select one by one those you're interested in. You can select all of them and then deselect those you are not interested in. And you see that we are checking, or the function filter is checking for name clashes because uh, what you see here, the PLC name is are, are the names of the parameters you are, you are going to find afterwards in your function block, respectively in the struct. And uh, you must not use twice the same name. Uh, but what happens is that sometimes the IODD has very long names and they are too long for uh, the, the function block in a specific PLC. So we need to shorten them. And it, it might happen that, that when, we, when we just cut something off, that we have name clashes because then the names are similar. When this happens, you will see uh, here a red cross. And when you scroll down, you will see where it's crossed. Here, we don't have any name clash, so everything is checked here. Uh, all changes are applied. And you see that everything is green. So you can just continue and click Next. And now you've got the selection which features you would like to use. And let me just use the three. And uh, you see your selection here, your the price. And then you can click at Finish. Now, being a customer in one of those countries you are from, uh, you are uh, uh, customers of what we call full e-commerce as a use. So you are, you are able to purchase using the web shop. And when your SIG ID is not uh, acknowledged, approved yet by uh, the respective sales organization in your country, you probably will not be able to continue here. So to buy in a web shop, you need to be, or your SIG ID need to be acknowledged by the SSU, by the sales organization. Uh, once your, your, your SIG ID was acknowledged, you can, you can just uh, click at create library. And uh, yeah, the creation is going to be started. Today it takes, it's quite slow. <laughs> uh, yeah, and now you will, you will get this information that uh, your configuration was successful and um, now the function block factory is creating your function block. It can take, depending on the system you are creating for and depending on how many people uh, s started the creation uh, and how many are in the queue uh, in front of you can take between just a few minutes, two or three minutes, to, uh, I already saw 45 minutes, even one hour and longer. It depends really on on the queue and where you are in and which, which system you are creating for. But you can just start to creating for another uh, function log. Uh, that was assume you are a customer of the Zimmer and uh, I have no clue how the devices are, are called. And you can just start another. You see here, we've got some devices from from Zimmer. You can, you can start further creation of further function blocks. Uh, meanwhile, the function block factory is creating. And once uh, the creation was successful, you will get an email, which looks more or less like that. Here, in this case, it's me, Mr. Kamp. Uh, your function block library was created successfully, and you will get a link here. And this link leads you to the web shop. And uh, in the web shop, you just do the whole checkout process. It's just like buying a standard sensor, it's the same process. But at the end of the of the checkout process, you will be asked to buy. And once you click at the button buy, you will you will be presented the link to the download of the function block library. This is a part I cannot show you because I'm a SIG employee. And for the SIG employees, this doesn't work. We do not have 
the possibility to buy uh, using the uh, the webshop. But I would assume that you are, you have already seen the webshop and you know how it how it works, and it's not really that much related to the function block actually. So the only thing you you, sh you should know is you you have to wait for uh, this email to come and just follow the link, and you will you will you you have some some more information about what you have created, what was generated for which to, which device, which PLC, how much it costs. Uh, Okay, once you have done it, I already explained it to you that you also are going to find to find your function blocks under my libraries. When you click it here, you see here are all my libraries and one is under creation and the others are already available. Okay, you can imagine that I already uh, prepared something and I already got this function block and now I would like to show you how to use it. And um, I'm going to use a back of PLC to show it to you. And then uh, also we will have a short look at uh, the Siemens PLC. So I have already prepared a project. I'm so far not using any part of the function block. What you see here is uh, the, the, the back of Twincat 3. And I have defined some process data variables. I have created uh, and hardware configuration. I've got an EtherCAD master, and I've got an IO link master, which is a slave of, on the EtherCAD. And you see, I've got two devices connected. We're just going to use one, just uh, uh, to save time. And uh, we are going to use this device, which is connected to the port three. Okay, so this is this one. So when I when I go online, this is the W. L9GC. When I go online and I open the port three, we see okay we've got uh, a process data which uh, has two bytes, which is which consists of two bytes. But we do not know what this byte means, so we do not know the content of it. Right uh, now, the the device I am using is called WL9GC, and it's a um, it's a uh, switching sensor with a counter and normally it's assumed that uh, when it sees something it just counts but you see uh, the value is changing uh, every every time I do something uh, it's changing by by four so something is wrong so what we need to do now is we need to find out which are the contents the process data and then we need to parse the process data but we have generated a function block which uh, or a function in this case, which does it for us. And the only thing we need to do is we need to declare uh, a, an instance variable, uh, which is of the type of the struct. And this is the struct which comes within the, the, the library, and you can see it here. So for those of you who know how to use Twincat, you, you know that in references you find your libraries. And when we look at the library, we will find the blocks. We find this function block for accessing the acyclic data and also the function uh, which parses the process data. And you see the, the documentation in here. Uh, you see the, the graphical overview, you see the documentation, how it looks like. And you see that when you look at the graphic, you've got this process data input. And on the other hand, uh, you've got and an output where the function block ex expects the struct and the struct for the process data is here and uh, here it's documented you see okay this is the, pro the process data zero and here's the process data zero and we see okay this process data consists of two bits bit zero and bit one the names they come from the iodd so they are described like this in the iodd we've got some explanation on it also, we put here what, what is written in the IODD, and you see uh, it has not only these two bits, but also one counter value, which is of the type uh, unsigned integer. Uh, yeah, unsigned integer, you see, you, see, you see it here. And what you need to do is you just need to take 
this struct and instantiate it. So this is what we have done here. And then you just call, uh, I would have prepared everything just to be quicker. And now you just need to, to, to call the function, which is also part of the library we have created. Just having a look at it, you see it here again. That's the function, right? And uh, you need to tell the function which is your process data. And we are using the process data on port three, and this is our process data from port three. So I just tell this function, okay, this is your process data you need to parse. And the output goes to the instance of uh, the struct. And here I find uh, the content of my process data. Now I just send it to the PLC. As I change something in the PLC programming. No. Okay. And now I can again open here uh, the process data. It's, it does not work yet. I also open here the process data. We see again, we've got just two bits and the counter value and now I start the PLC and we see okay we've got two bits which are zero and we've got a counter value of 10 and now when I just put my finger there you see it counts one by one while here we've got sealed this four so we, we we didn't need to look up any documentation we didn't need to look up the IODG uh, and, and we have everything we we need to know uh, and everything we need to do about the process data of this device. This was the process data. So you see, uh, you don't you don't need any documentation. You don't need to look to look up anything, and you don't need to do a lot of things. You just uh, call the the function, and that's it. Uh, the next step is we would like to uh, access the service data. So you probably would like to read. Uh, any diagnostic information or any parameter values, or you would like to parameterize the device, uh, change its states uh, or whatever. And this is what we are using. Hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. This is what we are using. The I just need to click here. Okay. Well, we are using this uh, function block four. So. The same, the same procedure uh, in the library, we find a function block, which is called function block sig WL9GC. This is how we called it. And a struct, uh, we can have a look here again. We find this function block and we find this struct, which more structs in there, which is uh, one struct for the selection and one for the data. And we just need for both of them an instance variable. And what you see here is just a variable for the address of the IOLink master. We need to address it. And the address is the net ID. And uh, yeah, I, I normally go like this. Uh, so I find here the net ID and I copy it here. You can define your own variable, or you can just type it here. And we need to call the function block as well. Uh, this is something we are going to do afterwards. So now we are having an instance variable of the function block. We are having an instance variable of the data struct where the selection is done and where we find the data afterwards. And we are calling this function block using this instance variable, of, of course. And you see, you don't need to do a lot of things. You need to address the IOLink master. We already have done it. And you need to tell which port the device is connected to. And in our case, it's port three. And uh, you also need to tell where the uh, data of the device are going to be written to or where they come from. And this is the struct, right? And this is the variable, which is an instance variable of the struct, and you just need to tell, okay, the device data is 
in the instance variable of the struct. And that's it. There is nothing, nothing else you need to do. And uh, just to read or write data, we need first of all to select which data we would like to, to read and then to tell whether we would want to read or not. And then the function block works like all the function blocks, blocks in the world work. Uh, you need a rising edge on the on the request or on the start input. And this is what we are going to simulate right now. So I'm just writing those changes to the PLC again. I, I make it a little bit bigger. Uh, uh, and I hope that this disappears then. Yeah, perfect. And uh, now we have a look in, into our struct. And we, we, we find in the struct a selection and a data section. Let us go to the selection. And uh, well, let me select just few few parameters, vendor name, product, product name. Uh, I'm just playing now uh, a running PLC system, right? Product name, product ID, product text. Uh, that's enough. So this is my selection. And uh, I just want to read it first. Uh, so I just can. Uh, go to the function block. I need a rising edge on the request and entry, and the read write when it's zero, it means uh, I'm reading. And I activate as well. So uh, we've got this section in here. Yeah, I, I did a mistake. I wanted to do it later on. Ah, okay. And now I can start my PLC. When I have a PC, you see, uh, I I I have written. I I I read the vendor name, the product name. I do not care about which data types uh, they are, which indices uh, they are. Uh, I do not need to interpret them. I just get the values I'm interested in, right? Uh, well, that's how I read parameters. Now I would like to write a parameter. And I would like to show you also the, the power of the enumerators. So for instance, you see here system command, uh, you see here, it, it, Enumerator state data storage. But the system command, it can have different values. And when I put the mouse over, you see that the, the value for start data storage would be five. So you need to know it. But what, what I would like to do is, uh, when we look at the process data, we see, uh, okay, we've got already counted till 23, uh, but I would like to reset it. So uh, I can use the standard command, right? So when I go here, and I would like to force the value. Now, if I do not have enumerators, I need to know the value I need to enter just in order to send the command to uh, uh, to reset the counter value. Without enumerators, I need to know the value. With enumerators, I would I will have a list, and I and I see okay, this is uh, the the value here for reset counter. So I'm just selecting reset, uh, reset counter, and I do not need to look up any values in any manuals, I just have it right here. And even when I when I have my code afterwards, and then there is a system command is equal to 192, it doesn't tell anything to me. But when I, when I have my code and, and then it's, my system command has a value of reset counter, I exactly know what, what, is, what is going on, right? That's the power of enumerators. And uh, you see, if you don't have the enumerator, you, you need to know that uh, this value is, uh, that the value 192 resets the counter. And what we need to, to do right now is, first of all, we need to deselect all the parameters selected. And now, if I would have this, uh, you know, I always have, have to, uh, opt for this for this feature, deselect all. I, I could just deselect all, but now I need to do it one by one. And I select uh, the system command. And what I what I need to do next is I need uh, I need a rising edge in my function block. And I of course need to uh, tell that I'm writing. So I select that I'm writing, and now. I'm starting, I will start the the writing, but just to make sure you see what is happening. 
And this is our raw process data. This is our past process data. And now we are going to send the command. And now you see, okay, the process data changed. We just reset it, the, the, the counter value, and we've got here two parameters, uh, two, two bits which were just inverted. They were set it. So it looks like there is a there is a uh, a threshold or two two thresholds, and well, this is how you read and write parameters. Uh, very easy uh, when you when you have enumerators, it's even easier and it speeds you absolutely up, and it makes your PLC code very readable. And uh, well, just to give you an example, what you can do is I prepared a, a little bit more uh, of, a, of a PLC program where, where we just can read some, some values. Uh, I've got a timer and I've got some, some selection. Let me just delete this. I've got some, some, some selection. So you see how the selection works? Uh, you just uh, type in your uh, instance of this data struct, the selection, you go into the selection and you just select which parameter you would like to read. And uh, we've got here the selection, we do it, we do it just once. And I've got a timer uh, and I'm reading every second those parameters. So if I transmit it to the PLC right now, it's very slow today. And open the data, I would expect that when I start the PLC, some of the selected data is going to be read. Uh, I don't even know which one I, I, I selected, but you see already some values. And I know for sure that, ah, okay, I forgot to, to do one, one change. Uh, I need the timer as the, the reading trigger. Uh, okay, now let us open the data and start the PLC. And I would expect some some values like the the quality of run is one of the selected information in here. Quality of run, you see it here. Yeah, and the quality of run is here 99. This is the value we have read, read out. We've got also this comparative value high and low, and we read here comparative value high and low is five. And uh, when I when I go here and observe my process data again, and I just count here, one, two, three. So now something should happen. Four, you see that the bit changed. Five and six again. Yeah. So this is how how the device works. We've got two thresholds, and they are at three and five. And uh, I very easy found it out. Uh, with uh, just just reading the, the parameters, and if you want to to read further parameters, it's very easy. You can just go here, and you say, uh, "I want to select further parameters." Dot, and you've got a list of all the parameters there. Are. You select this one. This is the application specific tag. You don't even care about the type. You just say, okay, I want I want this one, and uh, I want another one with is which is device status, for instance. And you say, okay, I want this as well, and that's it. You you're done. Now you, now we are reading two further parameters which are application specific tech and device status. 
And when we go here to the data, so let me make it big again. Uh, we've got here application specific tag and the status. Okay, there's a default value which is in here. You see it's also an, an enumerator and we see, okay, this is a string. Uh, when I start the PLC, uh, yeah, just the same value, device is okay. If you would, if you wouldn't use uh, enumerators, you will you will get a zero back. And in the application specific tag, we've got a, a value of P2, which what whatever it means. I was using this device, uh, and this is uh, with recipe management, and it was uh, my name for product number two. Uh, so now now you you saw how to use the function blocks, uh, how to read parameters, how to write parameters. How to select parameters, and you saw how to use the uh, uh, process data parser function to get the information which data, which information is in my process data, and to get this information already. Uh, we, we need to declare a lot of variables, just three, to be honest. Uh, otherwise, you would like you would need to declare for every single var uh, for every single parameter uh, a variable of the right uh, of the right type. And uh, you will need to care about the indices, sub indices of, of the addressing, about the raw data, uh, about the raw data formats, and so on. And you would uh, need to parse them to interpret them yourself. Okay, this is how it looks like in uh, in TwinCat, and uh, we've got still a few minutes, so I would like to show it uh, to you how how it looks like in Siemens, and it's exactly the same. So what we have here is the tier portal. And uh, in the tier portal, I already imported this function or this library. Uh, you, you see you've got the master copy for blocks and the master copy for data types. So that's the same. It's just the, 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 the uh, user experience in Twinkle is a little bit different. And uh, you need just to put it into both the, the, the copy of blocks and the copy of types into your program. So I already did this as well. And we've got the types in here. And you see you find the same types. You find this type for process data. And it has the same name. It has the same content because this is coming out of the, uh, of the IODD. And the same for uh, the process data, uh, for, for the service data, I've got the, the selection bits. Everything is is, is bool uh, or a struct when, when you've got records, right? Uh, and for the data, it's the same. You see the same parameters, the same names, and so on. And uh, for uh, so this is for the types and for the blocks. These two blocks were imported. So this is the parser function. You can even have a look into it. Hmm. Uh, it's, very, it's very, very slow today. So this is the parser function. Uh, it is accessible because uh, you can generate for a TR portal for V12 or V14, but you may use, like I'm using the V13. So it's going to be automatically compiled for uh, or converted for for your version and with the when when you when you generate for this 12 or the or the 13 you need to to generate for the 12 and for 14 15 16 you need, you need to generate for the 14 and the same for for this function block and yeah i have just prepared a, a main where uh, you can call the parser function. And here you need to address it a little bit different. So this is the ID of the port uh, the data come from. And when we, when we have a look at our hardware configuration, we've got a PLC. Uh, I am almost at the end. Uh, we've got a PC and, and, a, and a SIG 200 as a master. And we've got here at port one, a device configured. And when you see here, port one has the hardware identifier of 278 
and this is the hardware identifier here. We, we don't need any byte offset. And here we find uh, our struct for the process data. And this is this one. Yeah, that's the same. And last but not least, uh, the function block call, the same procedure. We've got a hardware ad ad address here. Uh, we are using uh, the hat, the hat module. So you need to take this hardware address, uh, 275, and this is in hex here. This is in hex, then the cap, and this you will find in the documentation. So you remember we have generated a documentation in English, and, and this is the documentation of the function block of factory. And here you find all the information you need about the function block you have created, about uh, how to use the function block, all the, uh, uh, all the, all the inputs, and here you see the cap for 6200 is uh 64080 and for the others is is different you've got all the inputs uh, explained and uh all the data you have selected is explained in here and also all the errors and the same of course for for twincat you see this is a, a lot of things because we have selected all parameters, so every single parameter is explained in here and how, how to use it and what it means. Or you don't even need it. And here, in case you commit an, an, an error, you gotta, if you will get an error message. And then uh, here you can see which error me message means what. And uh, at the end of this document, we, already, we also have a, uh, an explanation how to use the parser function. Yeah, and we saw that the the cap is uh, 46,080. And then the same for the data structure. You just need to tell which is your instance variable, which is your data block instance variable for the data structure. And in this case, it's that one. And you see that you will find the selection in here and the data in here. So the same behavior and this is the same for all the other plc systems uh, which we are supporting okay thank you very much